Arkansas Board of Commissioners for October 23rd, 2018. Uh, if you would, please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Two changes to the agenda under presentations, although it's not going to be a um, slide presentation. Interim Town Attorney Buckley will uh, uh, share some uh, insight on a legal matter um, as item E3. And uh, then we will flip flop. Um, um, item I will become item J and vice versa. We will do general public comments before the reports. Um, with those two changes, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Do we have anybody signed up for public comments? Clerk Schuler? No? Okay. Thank you. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion to adopt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. At this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Edna Drayford, Maria Goodenough, and birthday girl Pam Cook to uh, make a presentation to Police Chief Michael Ice. And I think, uh, Ms. Drayford, you're going to give a brief explanation of what, what you're doing here. Good evening. Uh, my name is Edna Drayford, and my cohorts is Pam Cook and Maria Goodenough. We are the group that prepares the quilts of valor for our veterans. And we've had one veteran to elude us for the last two years, and that is Chief Ice. So we would like to present you with your quilt of valor for honoring our country, and we're very proud to present this to you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations, Chief. Okay, let's move on to uh, presentations. And first up, uh, Gene Pritt, uh, Waxhaw Entrepreneurs, uh, a brief update. Um, Waxhaw Entrepreneurs have been a part of the town for a number of years, and we haven't had them here to give us an update in a while. So Gene graciously uh, accepted uh, the duty. So if you would, you. you want to sit down so you can speak into the microphone? Okay, is that how that works? I'm not, yep. not presented here. Before. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come and share with you a little bit about Waxall Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. Technical support is always appreciated. Um, this is a really exciting project um, and organization to be a part of. It's exciting for me, but it's also exciting for Waxall. A little bit of backdrop. Um, I have been a resident of Waxall for 30 years. How many of you all have been here that long? Almost. Almost. Yeah, that's right. I remember talking with you about that. So when I first moved to Waxhaw, um, I, of course, worked in Charlotte, lived in Waxhaw, and made that commute back and forth every day for 30 years, right? And so during that time, I've seen a lot of changes. Look, when I moved out here, the Arboretum was not even, it, it was not even in existence. I remember when they cut, when they broke ground on it, 
And I thought, what in the world are these crazy people doing out here? Who's going to come out here and shop? What in the world? So you see how it is now, right? <laughs> so um, I have enjoyed living in Waxhaw so much. Always, always, always thought, surely there's a way to make a living and be in Waxhaw at the same time, right? Um, without having to always commute to Charlotte to make a living. So um, fast forward to not very long ago um, in 2012, little did I know while I was still commuting to and from Charlotte that there was this amazing group of people <laughs> that had come to realize that, especially during the economic downturn, right, 2012, about four years into an economic downturn, and a lot of people were really having to re-engineer themselves. They were having to take a look at you know, what they did do and what could they do now, and um, the, there was a group of people mostly associated with the Wexall Business Association that realized that we really need to help folks to start small businesses. We need to provide them with some support. We need to give them a great economic um, environment and community environment to cultivate some of that business in. And as we've been discussing over the years, Waxhaw is very much a bedroom community. A lot of our tax revenue comes from residences versus businesses. And so this project really seemed like a win-win. Um, it assists with career changes and the entrepreneurial endeavors and identified a lot of need for support for small businesses and start, startups, especially in the Waxhaw community. Now, Waxhaw is pretty small to have an incubator. Most uh, organizations, most incubators are associated with universities and there are much more I wouldn't say more developed, but they're at least associated with universities. So we're very unique in this way. But um, we have a lot of partnerships with the Waxhaw Business Association, SCORE, of course, Town of Waxhaw. We're also a member of the North Carolina Incubation Association. Um, it's 100% volunteer run. There are thousands of hours logged a year, thousands, trying to keep this organization running. So it began back in. 2012, brainchild of a group of people who had really seen a need to transition economically based on the current economic circumstances at the time. Um, the mission statement of Black Entrepreneurs is, is um, portrayed, but really what we do is we incubate, we co-work, and we develop. Okay, so we help organizations, we help businesses to um, get the support that they need in order to develop, to come out of their shell, right? Get some wing, wind under their wings so that they can um, grow and, and, and really uh, prosper. Uh, we also have co-working space and then we provide business support as well. So um, there's a board of directors, I've got that displayed. I can't say enough about having Karen Johnson as the director. She's been through the whole thing. She's been from start to now um, and has provided us with a lot of guidance. Kurt White has been awesome representing the town of Waxon. Helped us to get make sure that we are staying connected to the business interests of Waxall and um, helping to meet the needs of the businesses in Waxall. So, um, and of course there are other volunteers up there. I am a volunteer board member. I also have a business. I operate out of my home though. I don't have a storefront in Waxall. So, um, it's a great mix of people on this board of directors with great diverse views and business experience and backgrounds. So let's talk a little bit about the incubations. This is a list of probably the most um, well-established or well-known incubations that we have supported throughout the years. The, the list is actually closer to the hundreds. Okay, so, and, and when we say incubate, people come to us for different things. Sometimes they come just for information. Sometimes they come for a connection. Sometimes they come because they need someone to help them write a business plan or to do a business model or to, um, there's, there's just a huge variety. Um, so the two on this list that probably stand out the most, of course, are Janet Baker with Suspeso. She has since transitioned into her own space um, through a partnership that she developed while in the incubator um, and is now known as Fourth Corner, is that right? Big house? I, I can't remember. <laughs> I just call it Deanna's Place. Uh, so, um, and then um, also um, uh, Ken Edelglass, who's got Waxall Kid Coders. Now, Waxall Kid Coders is really a huge success. 
Um, and as you know, they, she's not only offering classes now to children, but also to adults. Um, the most recent, we've got um, Kaiser Espresso. He, that is a new incubation that's currently in the Marxal Entrepreneurs. But there's a, it's the huge amount of support and different companies and industries that we've been able to support through this project. We've done a really, um, Wax Entrepreneurs is really focused on being sure to showcase Waxall. Waxall has got a lot of innovation, huge amounts of talent. It's in this little bitty town down in the southeastern corner, south central corner of North Carolina. And so any chance that we get to showcase that, for example, through partnerships with Elon and, and Winget, um, and to bring um, community partners into the Wax Entrepreneurs, like through the Storefront Theater and the um, Gospel Truth According to Locals, um, you know, partnering with the Farmer's Market, we have the Chamber as a member. Um, we're very closely connected with SCORE. We've got um, one of the SCORE executives on our board. Um, and, you know, we were instrumental, or at least mentioned, let's say mentioned, I won't say instrumental, in getting the Great Main Street Award. So this um, Wax Entrepreneurs has been, I think, great for the local community. We've been able to help a lot of different local business owners. Um, and it's also, been a way to help Waxhall to stand out as being different from some of the other small towns um, that are in the area. I don't think even UNCC has an incubator anymore. They did for a long time, but they don't any longer. So this is a picture of um, the, our newest incubator, Kaiser Espresso. If you have not come in, he's got great coffee. Um, and the uh, Hot chocolate is apparently to die for. We get a lot of rave reviews about the hot chocolate. I'm not a big hot chocolate fan. I'm a coffee fan, but get rave reviews about the hot chocolate. Um, another interesting um, incubator that we have started is a photo booth. Um, and so we have an artist from Created in the Carolinas who has decided to do a photography booth. And she'll be doing not only different seasonal photography, but then also headshots, business headshots, right, for people's websites and that sort of thing. So um, that's been a new incubator as well. Please feel free to ask questions as I go through. Um, let's talk a little bit about co-working, um, really supporting that remote workforce and small business. We have got a lot of people who work from home who live in Waxall. And so we saw that as an opportunity to really help support the business revenue that we need in order to maintain um, occupancy. Um, and it's a, been a challenge, I'm not going to lie. We have really struggled with getting people um, to come in and co-work, but a lot of that has had to do with the fact that we don't have really the resources for a strong marketing campaign. But you can see the numbers. We've got um, 38 community members. We've got 14 incubators right now. Um, we've got nine co-workers, and then we've got a number of silver and gold sponsors. And I've got the membership levels posted as well. I really think that co-working is going to be um, a big draw for the Waxhaw entrepreneurs and downtown Waxhaw in general for a number of reasons. First of all, you're going to be able to draw people into the businesses downtown, right, whenever. So get people out of their homes, get them out on the street, get them into the, the incubator, uh, into the, excuse me, Waxhaw entrepreneurs co-working. And then they'll be able to visit some of the local businesses. So I think it's a real draw. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. We've still got our work cut out for us, but we've been able to make some real strides in that area. It's a picture of the space. If you have not been there, is there? Um, it's a beautiful, absolutely charming, charming building. And you'll see to the left there the community wall. Those are our sponsors in our community. So developing, we offer some professional development and business development. I have a list of classes that we've offered so far. Future classes, actually, I say future, it was actually today, was the Serve Safe classes. And we were able to get a number of local businesses to attend those classes because, of course, we have a lot of restaurants in Waxall, right? And all those people have to have Serve Safe classes. Um, and then offering business headshots and photography at the photography booth. So offering that professional business development for local businesses is going to be great, is a huge draw for us um, and supportive of the business development for Wexel. Just 
just briefly a few next steps. Um, from an economic development point of view, we really want to help um, Waxall to be more than just residential and storefront. Um, we are going to be offering some candle making. We've got a 3D printer that's coming in December um, that we're going to have there as well, um, which is going to be great learning for local students and adults alike. Um, we hope to really partner very strongly with Waxall um, for attracting and incubating targeted businesses. I mean, I think there's a real opportunity here um, to really help meet some of the economic and business needs of the town based on um, different analysis that are going on. Um, we currently have a lease through March. We would love to see that extended. That is an ask that I have. Um, but we are seeing a lot in terms of uh, Waxhaw Kid Coders, for example, hiring college students and paying them very well. We've developed a partnership with the Track Stop and Shop um, for an incubator kitchen. One of the number one things that we have gotten questions about is, is there a commercial kitchen we can use? Charlotte's got a commercial kitchen um, that there are, where people are able to come in and rent the space. And we really don't, the, the building where we're at is not really conducive to that. Um, and we've tried a couple different other things and haven't really been able to do that. And just out of the blue, um, the gentleman that owns the track stop and shop has offered for our incubators to be able to use his commercial kitchen. And we're working through some of the logistics of getting agreements in place and who would pay for insurance and all of those. What are the requirements that we need to go through? So that's a huge, just a very exciting development, especially for our incubators who are wanting to get a small business off the ground. And they would spend all of their money going to Charlotte just to use a commercial kitchen, right? So we're really working very hard on that. And then we also have a BNI that's coming together in Waxall at the Waxall Entrepreneurs. They're looking to form a Waxall chapter, which is very exciting. Because as you know, that's a huge economic driver, business driver. Uh, BNIs are very successful in a lot of other areas. Um, we're hoping to increase our co-working. At this point, we have a target of 25 co-workers. I think that we can do much better than that. But at this point, that's where we're at. We're, we're shooting for 25. So you start where you're at and move forward. That's our goal. Um, and what we really want to see in, and develop is, is harness some of that innovation and some of that collaboration that you'll get whenever people are working in the same space not necessarily for the same company. And so really harnessing that and um, cultivating that and creating an environment where that can be productive and, and satisfying for, for everybody, um, and hopefully to see some business growth here, again here in Waxhaw, um, providing those solutions for remote workers and small businesses. Um, from a develop and support point of view, we're doing a lot there. Um, we're connecting folks, of course, with SCORE, but then also different experts, specialists. We recently had an incubator who came in who is a marketing um, executive and has started his own company. And so he's really been able to provide a lot of support as well. Um, learning and developing skills. So some of the things we're doing, for example, is a networking before work event. Um, we also will be holding some other classes um, in addition to, to the um, serve safe. And the other piece of what we're doing is making sure that people make those connections because we have folks there with a lot of talent that they can offer classes and cascade that talent down to other people in the community as well. So you'll see a class schedule that will be coming out soon. And that is my presentation on Wax Entrepreneurs. What questions do you all have? Questions? No questions. Yay. Do you have to be a member of the Entrepreneurs to be able to uh, take any of the classes that you're offering? Or no, not to take, not to attend the classes, the public classes. OK, are the public classes mm -hmm. then that you offer, is there a fee or cost for those classes? There is in some cases, and in some cases there's not. It really just depends on the presenter and what they would need. Um, we do have, um, if in order to become a member, it's $50 a year, pretty low 
barrier, we purposefully designed it that way. So if there are events that are members only, even that barrier is just very low. So the, the cost. And how would people find out about the classes that you're offering or the events that you're offering? Yeah, that's a great question. We don't have a marketing department yet. Um, we use Facebook. We use social media. Um, we use a lot of word of mouth um, and um, you know, getting on the different, primarily social media, Facebook. That, that's our primary way of getting it out. Other questions? No? Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Matt put up that slide for the CO. There we go. Okay. Uh, next item up is uh, just an update on the CRTPO meeting from last uh, last Wednesday. Um, and I've asked uh, Greg and staff that um, on the second meeting of them every month, we'll, I'll do an update um, when we have meetings, just so everybody is clear on the progress um, um, that um, is being made at the CRTPO. Um, Last week's meeting was one of the longest ones I've been a part of in, in uh, three and a half years. Um, I think it highlights the growth and complexity as as the STI statute uh, takes hold in 2013. What you have up there is a chart um, to kind of give you a perspective. I want to just talk from that of, of the funding that we're talking about. The red bar, $396 million on, uh, on a every two-year basis that the, the, uh, the state controlled that we have, uh, we vote on at the CRTPO to get allocated to projects like Highway 16, uh, the Waxhaw Parkway, things like that, major projects uh, that go through a very data-driven process. Uh, that process is driven by the state. We follow it, we, and we score accordingly to it. Um, the other side of it is the discretionary funding, and it may seem like uh, somewhat trivial, 20, $27 million, that's on an annual basis. Um, here's the perspective on that and the reason why we're spending a lot of time on that. Um, that is probably more watched by the federal government, and if you don't spend it in the time that they allocate it, they take it back. Give you a perspective, the Raleigh uh, version, the um, Campo, I think it is, Capital Area uh, Metropolitan Organization, they lost $50 million. They got it pulled back from the federal government because they didn't have the process in place and they weren't keeping keeping to their schedule. So it's it's a it's a number every year, 27 million, uh, 10 projects become 30. We're at 40 now and looking to go to 96 in two years in terms of local funds. Put in Waxhaw perspective, that's Kensington, that's the study on Waxhaw Marvin Parkway, uh, or Matt Waxhaw Marvin, and that's uh, the TAP grant uh, uh, funding that we've gotten um, from um, that particular set of funds. Um, what we spent time on last week was putting the controls in place around what's in blue and, and the implication to the town of Waxhaw is this. To play, you must pay. You need to invest in resources, uh, engineering resources, um, planning resources, uh, and, uh, and the reason for that is as a project comes forward and gets voted on and, and gets discussed, um, to make sure it is successful, there has to be a, uh, uh, an analysis done as, as to the success level uh, that, that it will complete. And if you have no engineering resource or planning resource that has weighed in on it, uh, by default, we will add a 45 to 50 percent contingency fee on top of it, which makes your project less competitive. Put in perspective, three years ago, Kensington, when we tried to get get it submitted in 15 days, would would not qualify at this stage of the game because the contingency fee would be um, uh, too high. Um, so um, that that becomes the other aspect critical to the town of Waxhaw is the, the necessity for a capital improvement plan. They look to see if your projects, if you have projects in a capital improvement plan and where it fits to determine the town's uh, commitment to it. Capital improvement plan will be 
a data request that in, in the future for projects on this side. So the things that we're trying to get done and get implemented are right along the lines of being able to submit projects uh, uh, for the blue funds, and those are very competitive. On the, on the red side, uh, last week we uh, unanimously approved the 2020-2029 local inputs allocation. There were 25, and I'll explain that, 25 projects considered, 20 projects got assigned by points by the board. What that means now is we send that on to NCDOT, and they consider how much of that 396 they're going to they're gonna allocate into whom out of those 20 projects, um, or 25 projects. Uh, the park, Waxhaw Parkway, the northeast corner, uh, would rank 21st. It was scored, first time it's ever been scored uh, by the Regional Transportation Organization, first time it ever got to a point where it could be scored. Um, it's borderline as to whether or not NCDOT will uh, allocate funds. We don't know. It's at 21st, you, you don't know. Um, but that's the step needed to actually begin the process for a technical and environmental analysis and get to the right route for that. Um, the thing that is weighing in Waxhaw's favor, uh, the public involvement period uh, that began on September 20th and, and ended on October 4th, uh, Waxhaw had a standalone public input session, 40 to 45 citizens and, and uh, participated. As far as the write-in comments, 185 comments were received, 107 of which were about the Waxhaw project. Um, and um, nearly all supported the project. Nearly all said we need a we need a route that's better. Um, uh, there, they were impressed by the fact that um, that Waxhaw Union County and Mineral Springs came together to write a letter of support with some um, uh, contingencies. And that letter of support stated that we support, provided that alignment alternatives are are realigned so we get the right route uh, going forward. Again, keep in mind, you, ha you have to work as a region. Waxhaw Parkway is about 38% located in Waxhaw. The rest of it's outside Waxhaw. So we can only provide input and engineer around what is in Waxhaw, and then we have to work with the rest of the, the region to uh, drive home uh, uh, the analysis that leads to scoring on that. But that letter and collaborative process and clear commitment was uh, instrumental according to uh, uh, the technical staff in getting to this first step. So, you know, um, we'll see how high, we'll see what happens. We won't find out until January, the, uh, the January meeting where the draft uh, list from DOT comes back to us. That's when we'll find out. And then we'll go through a whole other public process with the draft list. and. Um, and hopefully complete that in the May time frame. Um, lastly, um, while it didn't come up at the meeting, uh, what a lot of people have been complaining about Newtown and, Newtown and 16, harsh reality is we're getting as many cars as is maximum capacity through there. Uh, we'll get a little relief when the, the roundabouts uh, open up over at uh, Waxhaw Marvin in Newtown, but we're driving that road that intersection was designed for 20,000 cars. We're putting more than 20,000 through there uh, in the morning, and it doesn't matter what Scott Cole does with the lights. Uh, you can only get so many cars through there at uh, that time of day. So uh, we're hoping for some relief. I drove down. I drove over to, to the roundabouts. I don't know why they're still closed. Um, they look very pretty, and the grass is planted, but uh, they're still closed over there. And that will take all that traffic will go back to Waxhaw Marvin. So. Um, Anyway, that's where we are with uh, what happened uh, at CRTPO and, and how the funding. I think it's important everybody understand those things are, are completely out of the political realm and into the data realm uh, since 2013, and it's been, um, it's been an interesting journey for everybody to adapt to getting the right rules and procedures, and I applaud our technical committee and, and, and group for pushing to, so we don't lose money like uh, Raleigh did, uh, um, and that 50 million is a lot of money, so. Questions? And if not, uh, Mr. Buckley, would you Thank like you, to give an update? Just want to report to the board that um, a couple of weeks ago, the town was served a lawsuit 
arising out of the construction of the uh, swinging bridge at the Carolina Thread Trail, uh, Lancaster, and local agreement you had for the construction of that swinging bridge. And during the beginning phases of the construction, a tree cut was made down a long cliff to be able to access the area where the, where the bridge would be on the Lancaster side. And, and a young boy who had just moved into that subdivision, a minor, decided he was going to ride his bicycle down this dangerous area. He did and was killed. So his estate has filed a lawsuit and his father. And uh, there are six defendants. So it's not just Waxhaw. Lancaster is mentioned as a defendant. Uh, a homeowners association where the area was, the management of that homeowners association, and the developer all named as defendants. I will say that it's mandatory when there has been, as we say, a wrongful death, that the estate has to bring a lawsuit because that's an asset of the estate. And so the, the executor of the estate has no choice but to bring a lawsuit. And so where it goes, we don't know. But the moral of the story is it's already been turned over to assign risk, which is your insurance for, for these things. They will provide a defense, and they've already retained an attorney to represent the town on this. So just want to report that this is in existence, but assign risk is handling it, and so there won't be anything that we need to do uh, as a board, or, and I won't be involved either, and it's filed in South Carolina. And <laughs> I'm not licensed there anyway, so but the sign risk is providing an attorney for, to defend the time. Just that's a brief report on what that is. So thank you. Any questions for Mr. Buckley? Okay, thank you. We have no public hearings. Uh, on toll business, action on Thur thoroughfare protection overlay district text amendment petition. Alex. Hello. So I have no additional information, but I'm here for questions. So this was uh, presented to us uh, uh, two weeks ago as part of an introduction to the public hearing. Nobody spoke at the public hearing. It's a simple text amendment to give protection to the highway corridor, the Highway 16 corridor. Um, so do we have further questions for Alex? Any questions? If not, um, be happy to entertain a motion. Um, on this, and I think um, if you scroll forward, they, I'll go they could actually see the various motions. Motion to approve petition TA 007762-2018 as presented. We have a motion to approve as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Unanimous 4-0. And then would you like to do the motion for reasonableness? motion to approve the reasonableness and consistency statement the text amendment request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and future planning goals of the town of Waxhaw is reasonable and in the public interest as the test amendment is in keeping with the comprehensive plan and the intent of the thoroughfare protection overlay district we have the motion in front of us any further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. okay guys have thanks Thank Alex. You. Next item is approval of resolution adopting a revised code of ethics for the town of Waxhaw. This is, uh, you'd ask the question, why isn't this in the consent agenda? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward change. I think any time uh, we make any change to the ethics policy, it's always good to bring it out in the open. Uh, I, I, it reinforces to the public that um, we take ethics and ethics compliance very seriously. Uh, in this particular case, it's a simple change to uh, uh, eliminate the 2009 stimulus. There's one added statement that would go to the end of it, and I'd ask you to consider this. Uh, at the end of it, it says dated December 14, 2010, and September 11, 2018, because we did do a uh, change to the ethics, and, and so we would catch both of those. But other than that, the, those are the minor changes. Uh, that are with it. Any comments, questions, motions? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2018-016-01, adopting a revised code of ethics for the town of Waxhaw. A motion on the table. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Let's have it. Do we have any, anybody signed up for comments? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, then we'll get to uh, reports. I, the only thing I want to comment on is I've, I've had the, uh, seems like October is uh, the time when everybody wants to get an update on what's going on. I guess the weather's cooler and it's not at heated discussions and all that stuff. And I had the privilege of going to the women's club and I'm doing a couple of HOAs. Um, um, I'm not going to go through all of that as much as I want to hit a, a very key point that seemed to resonate with the women's club. We spent some time talking about how the town tries to work every day um, on, on, on three core values. We respect every citizen. You want us to view us as dependable and view the town as someone you can trust. And I believe uh, we, we execute that every day, certainly at the board level and the staff level. Um, to do, be trustworthy, you have to be open, and we have made openness and transparency a key focus for over the last two years. Um, board meetings, fully open. No closed sessions unless absolutely required. Uh, we do everything and vote on everything right out here in, in public. I compass, put everything online. We go through our rules of procedure, requires to have an agenda out there on, on Thursday afternoon, and we get one update on Friday in case we have a change as we see it, as the board gets a chance to look at it, and it goes final Friday, and any change has to be discussed here, as Melanie reminded me over the weekend when I had a thought that I wanted to change. We put everything out on the YouTube channel. We do that for a couple of reasons. We're getting a lot of access out there, but also then that gives us a record that Melody can go back to and make sure the minutes are accurate. Um, and we provide twice as many opportunities for, for comments. Um, the ask that I made of the women's club and the ask that I make of everybody and the ask I'll make of the HOA. Um, we're not gonna engage in, in Facebook banter. We are going to talk to you via our Facebook page, our website, and if you come in and talk to us or, or reach us via email. But we're not gonna engage in the banter that's been going on and continues to go on on a wide range of, of, of places. Um, Greg has uh, staffed uh, uh, the, the communications, uh, uh, and I can't think of the, the ID, but the communications ID is staffed. They get the questions to the right people. We get them answered. Um, uh, we had we had somebody come in just at a loss as to how to get their uh, yard cut and uh, as, as a for instance and it went to staff staff got some people to help from from some of the local ministries and away we went and, and we do those kind of things but we do it through this stated communications channel we're not going to encourage nor are we going to participate in all the other uh, banter um, uh, that goes on out there because uh, a lot of it just is not truthful. The other aspect is um, Tri W News. We try to put an update out there on a regular basis, and, and happenings goes out on a regular basis. So we have increased how we communicate, what we communicate, uh, and are totally open. And uh, I just forgot about it. Uh, we post just about. We take every record we produce and put it out on the website now. Um, so. Um, there's nothing um, that you can't find about the town and how we do business uh, uh, totally above board and ethically uh, uh, that's not available in a public record. So uh, that was a reassuring discussion with the women's club uh, in terms of do we di agree, disagree, of course. But the big thing there is the only way we're going to solve things like the Waxhaw Parkway and, and transportation issues and, and all these things is if we can have a, a, a adult conversation because there's no simple answer. Um, the example I used with the women's club to complete the full circle of the parkway, it's $238 million. Folks, we, we don't have $238 million and a vehicle fee is not going to pay for it. Um, we got some real tough issues and if we can't discuss it without um, poor behavior on, on social media, then we're never going to be able to solve these problems. So um, I was encouraged by the, the reaction from the women's club, and, and, and I'm encouraged by the reaction from the HOAs that, yeah, we need to up our conversations and, and have them. So 
that's all I wanted to share and get that out there. And so um, we'll go right, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Commissioner Wesley, Commissioner Burke. Nothing tonight. Commissioner Lee. No. Well, does somebody then have a motion to adjourn? Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Forgot. Manager Ferguson. I've got a couple slides. I'll keep it very brief, though. <clears throat> Almost uh, forgot, she's been sick. Had a great event for Autumn Treasures and the drilling and chilling event. We had over 15,000 people downtown over the weekend, so that's a huge event. Um, we, we were blessed with wonderful weather and a lot of vendors that were very happy to be there. And Dean and I walked around on uh, Sunday, and the common theme that the vendors said is just make it bigger. They're, they were having such a good time that they just wanted more, um, more people to be there beside them so that was kind of a, a brief report on that and Greg you need to be you need staff needs to be commended uh, the positive comments that came back Friday night Saturday Sunday about everybody the staff the volunteers how well it was run uh, kudos to you and the team for that well, our, our staff really did put on a, an outstanding event this year and I didn't hear a, a negative comment from anybody um, they were very uh, appreciative of all the things that the staff did for them and we did have great weather. It was, a, it was a nice weekend, but they were very happy to, to be participants. Um, we've got something coming up on Saturday night. We've got our Fright Night event coming up Saturday uh, from 4 to 11 downtown. Uh, the kids' events portion is from 4 to 6, so that's going to be a, another um, wonderful activity. And if we can go to the, I think the next slide that's up there, uh, might be the last one we have, but oh, there we go. There, there, there's uh, Kind of our upcoming schedule for November and December. Very busy time of the year for our, our staff and for the downtown area. Um, all these events are, are going to have great attendance, but um, certainly the the holiday festival lights kicking off the, the, the winter uh, Christmas season downtown really is going to be a, a great one to not miss this year as well. So, um, one other thing I want to report on that the staff is doing and is seeing some good conversation occur um, with the power outages that have occurred over the last couple of months um, there's some conversation taking place about reliability in the downtown area and specifically with Duke and so I think just to report to the board that we are having those conversations um, we got some feedback from downtown businesses particularly restaurants who it's very disruptive on a Friday night to, to not have power so we're working um, don't have anything yet solid to report but there's some good conversations taking place about things that could be done certainly on the industry side not on the town side but on the on the electric utility side to perhaps address that for the future questions for manager Ferguson and I apologize for trying to adjourn too quick um, I don't know if the rest of the, I think the rest of the board, we started getting a whole bunch of emails from some FEMA contact today. Um, is there anything in there that we need to be? No. That's all being handled by you and staff? Yes. yes. I'm not sure what happened, but they did. Once they finally declared Union County is a participant, now it's kind of information overload. So, But we're, we're working. Um, just on that note, we're not sure um, exactly how that process is going to play out for us and if we will be submitting claims under that FEMA process, your hands are really tied. And for example, um, the one vendor that could fix the suspension bridge can't do it under their guidelines because they gave us an estimate on what it would cost to fix it. So it, the, the rules don't make sense in some cases. So we're working through those. Um, we will get the suspension bridge fixed though as soon as we can. Any other questions? If not now, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.